Hello and welcome back to Aviation Abbey. Go where you feel the most alive. We know that with the increasing demand of air travel, there has been increased stress on existing resources at an airport, because of which airports around the world are undergoing major revamp, which includes carrying out maintenance of existing resources and construction of new resources at an aerodrome. Along with this, it is also crucial that there are safe aircraft operations at an aerodrome. So with this video, we will walk down some of the safety measures used at an aerodrome for denoting restricted use areas which may be there for construction works going on or maintenance works going on at an aerodrome. So let's dive into chapter 7 of ICAO Annex 14 that is visual aids for denoting restricted use areas. Firstly, we will look at closed runways and taxiways or parts thereof. A closed marking shall be displayed on a runway or a taxiway or parts thereof which is permanently closed to the use of all aircraft. A closed marking in case of temporary closure of runway, taxiway or parts thereof can be omitted only when the closure is for a short duration and adequate warning is given by air traffic services. So, a closed marking on a runway is white in color and that on a taxiway is yellow in color. We'll look at the specifications of these markings shortly. So, on a runway, a closed marking shall be placed at each end of the runway or parts thereof declared closed. And additional markings shall be placed that the maximum interval between the markings should not exceed 300 meters. So, suppose we have closed this runway as in the image. So, there is a cross marking placed at each end of the runway and the intervening cross markings are placed such that the maximum distance between the two markings does not exceed 300 meters. And when there is a closure of a taxiway, in that case, the crossed marking should be placed at each end of the taxiway that is closed or the part that is closed. So, as we discussed, the cross marking on the runway should be white and that on the taxiway should be yellow. So, when the marking is on the runway, it should be a cross marking evenly oriented above the runway center line. The length of the cross marking should be 36 meters. The width of this marking should be 1.8 meters. And this distance between the cross should be 14.5 meters. And in case this marking is on a taxiway, this length here should be 9 meters, the width of the marking should be 1.5 meters. So when an area is temporarily closed, fragile barriers or markers utilizing material other than paint or any other suitable material may be provided in order to identify the closed area. So let us consider the case when the runway 05R is closed. So in this case, there is a runway closure marker. And there are barriers and obstruction lights installed to denote the part that is closed. The taxiway center line marking leading to the runway have been omitted and the lights leading to the runway have been deactivated. The threshold marking at the beginning of runway 05R have been omitted. There is also a stop bar installed. So these are the measures that can be used to carry out construction or maintenance work safely at an aerodrome. So this basically alerts all the stakeholders that there is some construction work going on and that area is restricted for usage. So as we understood how the unserviceable area is denoted, let us look at the specifications of devices that are used for denoting unserviceable areas. These markers can consist of flags, cones or marker boards. Firstly, Unserviceability flag should be at least 0.5 meter square and red, orange or yellow or any one of these colors in combination with white can be used. As you can see in the image here, there are red color unserviceability flag used in combination with white. The unserviceability cones should have a height of at least 0.5 meter and the color used can be red, orange or yellow or any one of these colors in combination with white. As you can see in the image, this is an unserviceability cone. There are also unserviceability marker boards used 
which have a height of at least 0.5 meter and a length of 0.9 meter and alternate red and white or orange and white vertical stripes may be used. As you can see here, these are the unserviceable marker boards used here. There should also be an unserviceability light that is installed on the marker boards or the area that is denoted as unserviceable area or area of restricted use. The light should be installed taking into consideration the surrounding illumination and in no case the intensity of the light should be less than 10 candela. The light should be red in color as you can see in the image here. Now let us look at visual aids to denote non-load bearing surfaces. Shoulders of taxiways, runway turn pads, holding bays and aprons and other non-load bearing surfaces which cannot readily be distinguished from load bearing surfaces and which if used by an aircraft might lead to damage to the aircraft shall have the boundary between such areas and the load bearing surfaces marked by a taxi side stripe marking. The taxi side stripe marking looks somewhat like this. The taxi side stripe marking should be placed along the edge of the load bearing pavement. So let us consider this to be the taxiway. So this should be placed along the edge of the load bearing pavement with the outer edge of the marking approximately on the edge of the load bearing pavement. So this taxi side stripe marking should consist of a pair of solid lines each 15 cm wide and is placed 15 cm apart and it should be yellow in color. Lastly, let us look at the pre-threshold area. When the surface before the threshold is paved and exceeds 60 meters in length and is not suitable for normal use of aircraft, the entire length before the threshold should be marked with a chevron marking. So this is the area before the threshold and since it exceeds 60 meters in length, there is a chevron marking painted here. Practically, this marking looks somewhat like this. The chevron marking should be of a conspicuous color and should be in contrast to the marking that is used on the runway. It should preferably be yellow and should have an overall width of at least 0.9 meters. The other specifications of this chevron marking is given in the image here. So with this, we come to the end of the video on visual aids to denote restricted use areas. Do comment down below on what more videos you'd like to watch on Aviation Abbey. Do follow us on LinkedIn, the link of which is given in the description. To visit our website aviationabbey.com. And if you like our work, do not forget to like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. This is Anvesha Pal signing off. Thank you.